After seeing the first few episodes of The Last Dance, rewinding basketball history and going through all of the reactions, it's undeniable that Jerry Krause was the backstage architect of the 1990s Chicago Bulls. But it's also an undeniable fact that this team was led by a player many consider to be the greatest of all time, Michael Jordan. It was never a secret that Krause and Jordan didn't get along, especially now. Still, the bitter relationship between the two personalities provided the team with backstage tension. This tension constantly kept the Bulls awake, eager to thrive and ready to rage against the rest of the league. The team owner, Jerry Reinsdorf, was very aware of the constant tension between the two. But as the team thrived and achieved better and better results over the years, he did nothing or very little about it. Especially amid the 1990-91 season. The Bulls were all about winning. With their Eastern Conference nemesis, the Pistons and the Celtics, aging and injury prone, Reinsdorf and Kraus decided not to change anything in the Bulls winning formula for the breakthrough season. The history of the Jordan Kraus feud goes way back to 1986, when MJ promised Duke's point guard Johnny Dawkins that the Chicago Bulls would draft him. However, at the 1986 NBA draft, the Bulls picked forward Brad Sellers, a player MJ never really got along with. MJ felt embarrassed and betrayed by the Bulls because of his unfulfilled promise to Dawkins. Sam Smith, longtime NBA writer for the Chicago Bulls, said, Jordan believed that Dawkins would be the choice, and he had told Dawkins so in pickup games they played in North Carolina. So, when the Bulls skipped Dawkins for Sellers, Jordan felt embarrassed. Then, on June 27, 1988, MJ and Charles Oakley, the NBA's second leading rebounder for 1988-89, were on their way to Las Vegas to see the epic Mike Tyson fight Michael Spinks. All of a sudden, the two inseparable buddies on and off the court learned that Oakley was traded to the New York Knicks in exchange for center Bill Cartwright. MJ felt betrayed by the Bulls due to not having his most trusted teammate with him anymore. It was after this deal when MJ began to wonder if the Bulls wanted to win or just keep Chicago Stadium full. According to Sam Smith, author of the book The Jordan Rules, with Oakley gone and the 1988-89 season underway, Jordan had severe doubts that the Bulls power forward Horace Grant would fully develop his potential at the position. So, MJ tried hard to lobby for the acquisition of a player who would significantly help the Bulls if he eventually came to Chicago, the experienced net center, power forward Buck Williams. But the deal never happened, and it was the Portland Trailblazers who landed the fearless veteran on June 24, 1989. Williams significantly helped the Blazers reach the 1990 and the 1992 NBA Finals. Before the 1990-91 season, in which the Bulls won their first NBA championship, Jordan did, however, urge and manage to convince the Bulls' front office to add another tall player to the already mighty roster in the form of center Scott Williams from Jordan's NCAA alma mater, University of North Carolina Tar Heels. The 6'10 Williams went undrafted in the 1990 NBA draft and the Bulls signed him as a free agent on July 20th, 1990. As the 1990-91 season progressed, the new Chicago Bulls implemented triangle offense more and more and were literally on their way of becoming the untouchables. But Jordan was restless, knowing how much trouble the Bulls had with the Pistons, the Cavaliers and the Knicks in the past postseasons. He wanted the Bulls to add some more veteran leadership and firepower to the bench. He was sick and tired of giving his last atom of energy, getting his butt kicked over the years before seeing the bad boys from Detroit again advance to the NBA Finals over the Bulls. Jordan had his eye on a 36-year-old veteran shooting guard, Walter Davis, who at the time was thriving and playing great ball in Paul Westhead's version of the Denver Nuggets high-octane run-and-gun offense. Davis played for the UNC Tar Heels during Jordan's early teenage years and then took his game to the NBA. The excellent perimeter shooter with a picturesque jump shot played for the Phoenix Suns and Denver Nuggets from 1977 until 1991, while also appearing in six NBA All-Star games along the way. On January 23, 1991, Davis got involved in a blockbuster three-team trade which got him to the contending Portland Trailblazers, the Bulls' potential opponent in the 1991 NBA Finals. 
Shooting guard Dražen Petrovic and power forward Terry Mills went to the New Jersey Nets and power forward Greg Anderson went to the Denver Nuggets. Jordan felt betrayed, displeased and underappreciated by the Chicago Bulls front office yet again. After finding out that Davis was on his way to Portland and not Chicago just prior to the game versus the Nets in New Jersey on January 23, 1991, MJ went ballistic, blaming Kraus for the wasted opportunity. As soon as we get back, I'm calling Jerry Reinsdorf. Kraus has messed up everything again. He can't do anything. When Michael Jordan returned to Chicago, he insisted on meeting with Reinsdorf. All the while pointing out that Kraus isn't a good judge of talent and that the Bulls should have a former player as a general manager. I figured I'd try to put the pressure on him to do something about Kraus. This thing isn't over. I'm gonna get that guy fired yet. Interestingly, according to Jerry Krause, who passed away on March 21st, 2017, Jordan never directly confronted him about his decisions. But I will say one thing for Michael Jordan. He never came to me and asked for other players. He never came to me and asked me to draft a player. He never came to me and asked to trade for a player. Never once did that happen. Part of it was he thought he was so darn good he could win without him. He understood what we had to do as an organization. But MJ reportedly did just that. Two days after the Davis trade, on January 21st, 1991, loudly telling Kraus, if I were general manager, we'd be a better team. At that point, the Bulls owner Jerry Reinsdorf was pretty much aware that Kraus was not the prototypical NBA GM and not the ideal person to run the show. But the team was winning. Chicago Stadium was full and there was little or no reason to fire Kraus at that point and step into an uncertain future. And that's precisely what MJ wanted at this point. Claiming Kraus is incapable of making serious deals other than in NBA drafts and landing him some of the much needed experienced supporting cast. He wasn't a good judge of talent. The Bulls should have a former player as a general manager. Knowing that this kind of bad blood isn't doing any good for the basketball organization he was building over the years, the Bulls owner Jerry Reinsdorf decided to invite MJ to his North Shore residence. That was the first time Reinsdorf ever invited a player to his home. It happened before the Bulls mini Western Conference road trip, which started with a game in San Antonio on January 31st, 1991. Reinsdorf showed a great deal of understanding for Air Jordan's remarks on Kraus, admitting that the GM he appointed back in 1985 had his weaknesses, but he also sharply pointed out that the team is on a winning course and that Kraus made several successful personnel moves over the years. We are in the first place. Jerry's done some good things. He got Scotty and Horace in the draft and he got a center, Bill Cartwright. If Jordan somehow got a hypothetical chance to direct the Bulls draft and trade policies in the late 1980s and early 1990s, the 1990-91 Chicago Bulls team would have featured a total of five players MJ wanted on the team. Johnny Dawkins, Walter Davis, Charles Oakley, Buck Williams and Scott Williams. But on the other hand, the team wouldn't have John Paxson, Horace Grant and Bill Cartwright as vital pieces of the early 1990s Chicago Bulls NBA dynasty. Plus, the Bulls would have missed out on drafting and bringing over the world's leading amateur player, the versatile European gem, Tony Kukoc. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoy our content, please subscribe.